Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I can see that on chat part there is a problem, and so uh, yeah, there's a a, a part of the uh, go board there and the, in the chat part. So uh, it's imperfect. I'm sorry because I'm new on this one, and today I'm the one who is uh, handling all the settings. Uh, we have done, done a bit test, but uh, yeah, there's still a problem on that part. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. But uh, I guess uh, it uh, shouldn't affect us uh, to have over this lecture. And uh, yeah, and that is that. Yeah, that that problem is not beautiful. But uh, I guess we can fix this problem really next time or later. I don't know how to fix it now. <laughs> okay, hi everyone here. And um, do you have any? Upcoming tournament. Is there anyone who is actually fits into any kind of tournament soon, or have you just played a tournament? Yeah, as you can see today, we are going to talk about tournament, and that is why here I want to actually talk a little bit about tournament. Have you played a tournament, or are you facing to any kind of tournament soon? Ah, you have chess tournament next week. Um, well. <laughs> Uh, I guess today what I'm going to talk about is exactly about how to play, how to prepare a Go tournament. I guess it's not about chess tournament. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's not something I'm really good at. Ah, okay. You're going to play some later this year. All right. Do you normally have any kind of preparation before a tournament? Uh huh. I see. Do you normally do some sort of preparation before a tournament? Just wondering. Or you just say, okay, there's a tournament, I'm just go, I'll just go there and then I'll just play. Uh, let's see what go. Yeah, what we gonna happen then? Is that the case? Ah, I see. Hmm. Joseki, all right. Anything else? You may actually do the preparation. Yeah, I'm speaking here. Also, we have a. I guess people is gradually coming, so I guess we can talk about tournament a little bit first before we enter the real part. Hmm. Ah, you look at some of your opponent's games. So look like uh, there's a limited number of potential opponents in your, in your local area. I don't suppose. All right, but okay. Um, today I want to actually talk about the tournament preparation, and uh, this one is the a for when you are gonna face to a tournament, and uh, probably to you this is an important tournament. And uh, I for, first want to make it clear when we talk about tournament, note is not just one game. Like for example, we know that some of the online tournament, you may just play one game per week. And uh, this is not what, what we, are, we are talking about here. We are talking about a tournament in which you need to, for example, play for normally one day, two days, three days. And normally in one day is often more than one round. And that is the tournament we are talking about today here. And normally those kind of tournament, they are like the European weekend tournament, or I know in North America, your weekend tournament, Sometimes it's maybe three days, if including a holiday. Yeah. Okay. We are basically talking about this kind of tournament and how do we how do we prepare for that? And here talk about Joseki. Yes. Okay. I know that many many people will gonna say I'm gonna prepare some Joseki, maybe some AI variation, either to get familiar with it. So I'm gonna try it out in my game, and I have the I have enough knowledge. My opponent doesn't have enough knowledge. And then I'm going to take advantage from that. That is one way. Or I'm just going to do enough preparation so to make sure when I'm going to play my own games, I will not be tricked. I guess uh, 
basically talking about JOSECI preparation, they are the two aspects that when you are saying I'm preparing for it for JOSECI, this is actually what I'm doing, right? Aha, uh -huh, okay. In October, all right. I hope that is the unimportant one to you. And then what we are going to talk about here will be very useful to you, I hope. Hmm. Okay, but yeah, basically, I guess uh, talking about Joseki, and they are actually the useful part. But actually, let me ask, when you talk about Joseki, how often do you experience uh, the, uh, uh, do you experience uh, in your games as I have prepared my Joseki, and then when I enter my games, either my opponent doesn't have enough knowledge about the Joseki, I directly get huge on that corner variation, and that actually basically make me win the game. Or my opponent knows some Joseki, and I didn't know about that, and I clapped in that area, and that's the reason I lose the game. How often does that happen? Um. Aha, uh -huh. I see. Yeah, here, but okay, I'm I'm actually still for now talking about Joseki. So how often does either of the above situation happen in your game. In other words, how often does Joseki decide your game in general? Yeah, that is actually my main question here. I see your best knowledge. <laughs> okay, one in a thousand. Probably uh, that's an extremely low, low number. Uh, I guess to more uh, to most people, it's probably a higher number than that. But uh, I don't suppose it's not that high. Hmm. Aha. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you just you play the first two sec in a tournament that got published in a book. I think I have some similar experience as I lost one tournament game that was already back to fifteen years ago or something. I lost a game. I lost badly, and that game I played definitely lower than my normal level. And that game was published somewhere, and many people got to read it, and I was embarrassed too. Yeah, but yeah, that happens because. We all sometimes play bad games. Mm. Okay, so Joseki is rarely decisive. Yeah, so this is actually my my uh, my impression as well. So to prepare for Joseki is not as important because okay, this is all, all something I often tell my students. Uh you can prepare for Joseki, but what if? Yeah, you say. I, I took that play here and he also there, I play here, he also there. All right, then we are on track and so it has to come to this and I have enough knowledge. But then the problem is what if? And it is the what if the opponent doesn't really do as what I expect him to do? He play away from the variation I have prepared for. And it can easily be afterwards I check on AI. The move he has played for he, he has played that is not AI top choice, but it's fine. Like, yeah, normally in the opening, I define the move as far as, uh, for example, you put your move into Katago, and Katago says, well, yeah, you drop a little bit, you drop like 0 0.3 points. Normally inside half a point, I would say it's fine. Especially at, at our level, yeah, if you drop half a point, it's fine. So his move can be fine, but that's not anything you have prepared for. Actually, you may lose something, but very likely still it doesn't matter. Yeah, so... That's what I've told my, uh, most of my students. To prepare for a Joseki, spending a lot of time, probably is not worth it. And then how about your opponent prepare something and you do not know? Well, in that case, you can also do as, as my understanding, I'm going to just play like this. Or I play something simple, which is very unlikely AI top choice or the AI recommended move, but it's fine. And then, Okay, move on. And that corner will not gonna be decisive. Just as uh, yeah, I, I I'm sorry. That's our time has mentioned here. Yeah, it's not decisive. So today, uh, talking about tournament preparation, I want to actually talk about those parts that potentially can be decisive.
and how do we prepare for that? Okay, and this is actually something mainly I want to talk about. Okay, and uh, uh, first I, I would like to actually tell about, let's say the conclusion part. And so you, I first give you kind of like uh, what I recommend, but the following in the lecture, I'm gonna explain. And also we may actually have a little bit, uh, let's say practice or some examples, and we see why exactly that is the case, okay? So here I will first show this one. Let me see if I handle it correctly. Okay, I guess you can see this page. I hope you can. Okay, good. So you can see this one. Okay. Uh, here I can only write it uh, very briefly in short sentence. I'm going to explain about every single one of them. But here I will read and actually I will make those, those sentences actually longer. So we actually have a procedure to prepare for actually any kind of a tournament, especially if it is an important tournament. Because if you say, this is a tournament, but it's like a tournament I'm just playing for fun, I just meet with friends, you don't have to follow this. Yeah? You, you follow this when it comes to an important tournament. So normally, one month before the tournament, or a little bit more than one month, definitely not more than two months, okay? You should follow this. So you are going to tournament to play games. So number one thing, of course, you need to play in games regularly. You might actually ask, what does it mean regularly? Does it mean I need to play like two games per day? Or maybe I need to play every day? Not necessarily. We are not a professional player. And you have your studies. You have your work. So uh, it's kind of impossible to actually play that often. Regularly only means, hopefully, in a week, you can play a couple of relatively serious games, relatively. And I said, hopefully it means that will be ideal. Because sometimes you say, I know that is something I should do, but this week I just have too difficult time in my work or study. I have some exams. I really cannot do it. No, you cannot do it. But when you can, please try. Yeah. And then a couple of relatively serious games, and then some not that serious, but practicing games, hopefully. Because you are going to play tournament, of course, you need to play some games. And the second part is important. Do some relatively simple problems. And do many. And on those problems, since they are relatively simple ones, hopefully you are capable to work them out in a relatively short period of time. Something like 20, 30 seconds. Yeah, and then you work out many of them. All right? Okay, and then the last part, reduce amount at the last days. So for example, I'm just uh, like three to four days before the tournament. All right, I keep playing games regularly and I keep doing problems. Then at the last few days, remember the amount of, uh, especially for the problems, needs to go down. I have described it to some of my students before that this kind of preparation actually is kind of like a heel shape. If in your mind you can, you, yeah, you can uh, imagine a heel. So at the start of the preparation, okay, I will actually start playing games and doing problems. Assuming you haven't done either of them for quite a while already, okay. You start with a relatively low amount and gradually climb up, 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 up to the top, okay? And then you stand on the top for a bit and then at the last days, normally ten, seven to ten, 10 days before the tournament, it should go down. Three to two to three days before the tournament, it goes down to kind of like minimum as the start. Yeah. Uh, uh, Garden, I'm going to talk about it later. Here, I'm just uh, talking about the goal part. I'm here just, just uh, talking talk about the goal part. How do we prepare for the goal part? But I, I'm going to talk about that for sure. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually my suggestion on as for goal. How do you actually prepare for a tournament? But okay, now I'm going to explain it. Now I'm going to explain it. Many people have actually asked me, why simple problems? 
why you don't do those kind of problems that is uh, let's say uh, relatively difficult ones and uh, even uh, even if the case that those problems are actually very important and helpful to improve my reading ability all right okay so here this is the part i should explain then um we know that for example professional players we are when he give you a suggestion he, he always emphasizes to you about the importance of reading right and then he said okay in order to improve your reading ability you need to do so many goals and you need to do some relatively difficult ones okay that is their recommendation the thing here is however uh professional players they are actually first they have a lot of time yeah, that's something we cannot possibly compare to. That's number one. Number two, professional players, they play one game per day. In the, let's say, that is actually the hardest time schedule they may have. One game per day and then one every day. I think I have seen yeah, those kind of time schedule probably in China. Yeah, in some Chinese tournament. But for example, in Japan, I think the... Uh, Busiest ones are the ones who play like three, uh, one game in three days. So first, they play one game at a time. And number two, we know that the prof professional players, their time setting in a game is often two hours, two and a half hours, three hours. And at least here in Europe, our time setting is often like one hour main time plus Bayomi, some sort of Bayomi. Sometimes we have this less time and then some feature. But our time setting is actually pretty low there. All right, because of this, okay, actually here, there are two factors you need to consider. One, we will say, I'm gonna face to some difficult situation in which I pay enough attention and I read into it. I take like 10 minutes out of my clock, maybe 15 minutes, and I just read it. How often you can do that in your time again? Just, just imagine how often you can do that. And when you are doing that, when you are doing, when you are doing that, uh, are, you, are you capable to do it right, just like you are doing a problem at home? Because in tournament, there's different atmosphere, there's pressure. And also, you're going to play maybe two or three games per day. You're going to put a lot of effort to read that. Maybe let's imagine twice in your games. And then, after that game, very likely you'll say, oh, I'm so tired. I don't want to do anything. And then you're facing to the next game. Do you plan to win the next game? And do you plan to do the same win? That is actually my reasoning here. All right. So the far majority of the situation when you are facing to, yeah, when you are facing to in your games, they are similar to relatively simple problem in which you need to actually read out relatively fast. Earlier I said 20 to 30 seconds, that will be ideal. That basically means even if you are in shortage of time, even if you are under temperature like in Bayomi, you are still capable to manage. But for example, I do have the time and then I, I probably need one to two minutes to actually read this thing out. Okay, it's good. Yeah. You, so you can do some problems like uh, like that, but definitely not those kind of problems you say, I need to sit here for like over 10 minutes. Those are the ones you need, but not that much. The percentage need, yeah, need to be heavily reduced, and we give way to those relatively simple problems. Okay, and on this part, okay, I will switch back here, but on this part, I guess I should give some examples. And yeah, so uh, yeah, we actually here talk a little bit about reading here. All right, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this game and uh, this position. Are you familiar with this? Can anyone tell me? if uh, this board situation is uh, familiar to you or not. <laughs> Never seen it? All right. Has anyone seen this board situation before? Aha, uh -huh. all right. Okay, that's why. 
Uh, this is uh, this is a game that has just happened a few days ago today, is Saturday. Yeah, today is Saturday. This is a game that happened on Tuesday and Wednesday. This is a whole nimble title uh title match game one between uh Yamayuta and Ichiriki. Yeah, this is a bullet situation here. Okay, can you see what the black should do next? Um yeah, let's say on top at this moment. Yeah, I know somebody. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, somebody has to remember this. Yeah, because this just has happened a few days ago. So, question is here: Is what black should do here on the on this board? And basically, we are talking about only on the top because white has played this triangle. And is there a way for black to solve it? Uh, for those who have uh, who have seen this game, do you remember how Black have solved this situation in the game? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. All right. Okay, anyone else has read has read anything here? L eighteen. Oh seventy. Uh-huh. All right. Okay, I'm basically counting time at the same time. Um I hope you are still reading it, but uh, basically, if we imagine you are in Bayomi and uh, you haven't really answered to me or react yet, uh, you can also solve it. If you say, I'm still reading it, then basically in Bayomi, yeah, there's no way you can solve it. All right, so let's look at this uh, situation together then. First thing, we need to notice uh, on the top side, this one is white center. Because here, white will want to actually get B and then the, the, the entire corner will be captured, right? That's actually something very important here, okay? And then uh, we say, if black play, for example, this one is relatively simple, okay? And then white has a... Yeah, here white need to be careful. If white put here, black will. If white put here, black block white is captured. So white will need to push this one. Okay, and then black block. Now white push this one. Okay, now black cannot do this one because then there's a cut, right? So black can only do block. And then when white cut, black say let's play the call. This is a possibility. But the thing is, if we say this is center, then white can attack here and connect. Then black top side is all that because white is connected, right? I guess this is not anything too difficult to notice. Yeah, so this is actually the thing here. All right. So that is why that doesn't work. And somebody has mentioned IL 17 here. Uh, IL-17 is uh, simple. IL-17 just means what if white block here, white directly wins the race, white capture the two. And uh, you may say, well, the loss is limited. But here, on this board situation here, 
if white captured black two stone there, then black will lose the game. All right, I will actually show what happened in the game because here actually uh, I'm basically just showing this example to actually tell about tournament preparation. I actually don't expect we can actually, yeah, many of you can actually solve this, uh, let's say here in our lecture, especially if you haven't seen the game. I will show what happened here in the game then. In the game, black find Kosumi. Okay. Yeah, and they, yeah, this move is a cutting move here because uh, if, for example, white, uh, okay, for example, white attach here and say you do like this, if you capture, I push and this one, I call it, this is still sending, and then this is, this is the same thing, right? But uh, black has already prepared for, we will cut here, I'm just gonna Atari, Atari, so you don't have liberty. Yeah, so this is what he has prepared for. So in the game, white has to push first. And uh, white still cannot do this. Uh, sorry. Uh, hmm? Why can why white cannot do this? Uh, here actually white can do this, right? Because if take this one, this is still Sane and Atari. Yeah, so look like here actually white can do this. Okay, I'm uh, I'm I'm not sure how uh, to, does anyone have AI here that can actually check it out. Black play I'm nineteen. Sorry, one sec. Black play I'm nineteen. I'm nineteen, but I'm nineteen. This one is still sunny. Uh, but that actually doesn't matter. What can actually attack from here and capture from behind? So I'm nineteen doesn't doesn't help. Right? Oh, you mean white right side of group, but uh, oh, that's something relatively complicated. Um, because that also has something to do with the black corner. So uh, it's not that easy to kill that group. I don't think that is related. But anyways, okay, I will just show what happened in the game here. In the game, what happened is white cut from here, and black take liberty, Atari connect this one and the code. So black actually find this variation in the game. And uh, that's what happened. I assume white has read everything there. And that, that is why I, yeah, I just suddenly wondering why white doesn't do that attachment because that one should work. Yeah, but anyways, so, so this is actually what black has found in the game. And then this one actually saved the black on the top side. But okay. Uh, so black find this move. If black hasn't find this move, then basically there's no way. So basically on the top side, the black will be captured. Okay. Um, but this is actually a difficult question here. First, the black actually found this in his bear Yumi. But it actually starts from here. So why the play on the top side of this big move? I'm sorry, one moment. Um, uh, okay, we are still talking about that. Let's see. Maybe I missed something. Responding to J19, what, he play L16? L16, but then what means by one? What well, just means, right? Yeah, 
I don't think that that is the case here. It could be it has something to do with the right, right, right side, that whole group's left and death. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, okay. I assume the white actually read things correctly because in the game, white played this one. But actually, I don't know if white has played here what is going on. To me, this, yeah, if I were white, probably I would, yeah, no, yeah, if I were white, I would have played here. Hmm. But okay, uh, sorry, uh, if you don't mind, I will move on here because this has nothing to do with our topic. In the game, black find out this move here. And this actually saved the black in the game. Question is, do you think the black can actually read it out at this moment in the game? I mean, that's actually what happened. Black actually reads things out properly already at this moment in the game. But imagine if you are black, can you manage? Hmm. If you are black, can you manage yours? Okay, here. I'm already going to do this uh, IL-18, and then I find that as first line consuming, and it come to a code, that can actually save me. And here, I can't really give in here, because if I give in, I will going to lose all the top side territory. I will lose again. OK, this is actually a rather complicated reading plus judgment, isn't it? So this is something Yama has found out in his game, actually in Bayomi, one minute Bayomi. But this is the kind of reading I wouldn't say is practical to us. So, for example, if this is uh, again happened here in Europe, I just expect, okay, so for example, here, this game happened in Europe, I expect, for example, Black just also hit. So, just to fix his own problem on uh, this one and get a connection, move on. Probably next, the Black will want to get a, add a move here in this corner. You may say like this, black will lose the game. Well, under our time setting, we can't do more than that. Okay, so I guess here you understand the reasoning why I gave this kind of example. What black did in the game is likely brilliant. Yeah, but the thing here is we cannot do it. We do what we can do. Yeah, this actually has something to do with the yesterday. Uh, I would actually talk about one topic that is uh, will European top players ever be able to compete with the Asian yeah, with the Asian top pro? Not just for one game, not not to get one victory, but in general, are we capable to compete? And I have actually reached a conclusion. The conclusion is. Uh, unless in European go here, we have some big change. Otherwise, no, we can't. The reason is this. Okay, I will still come back to this situation here. In our tournament, when this kind of situation happens, our conclusion is actually very simple. Well, here, I'm not going to do that kind of complicated stuff because I need time to read and I can't see it. So I'm just going to do something. Rather simple and move on. It's close game, right? And how close it is? I don't know. It's somewhat close. We don't even know the number. Yeah, so this is actually uh, the problem here. And so in European tournament, our players actually have this kind of experience. This kind of situation, we don't have time to read. So we are just going to play simple and move on. And in Asian, in Asian pro tournament, they know they're supposed to take their time and they want to read it. And then when it comes to the international competition, it is the, the games with more time than our tournament. Also, it's closer to the Asian tournament games. So the Asian pro will still follow their habit. And our top players follow our own habit. Then this is actually the moment that it will be decisive. Yeah, this is actually the uh, yeah the game that has happened three days ago. Yes. Hmm. Oh, hi, Dave. <laughs> yeah. So that is why here we say in Europe, because in Europe we have limited number of professional players. We cannot really divide like uh, too many separate pro only tournaments away from amateur. 
are we from amateur? So basically, we say pros can also play yeah, uh, almost all the amateur tournament. And then, since the amateur tournament is their far majority tournament, they actually have earned their tournament experience as how to win in amateur tournament. Hmm. Uh, yes and no. I'm saying yes, as if we want to actually compete with Asian Pro, that is actually what we need. But the thing is, that is not the way, for example, to most of the amateur tournament, right? Because in amateur tournament, you use that kind of time control. How many games you're going to play? You play one game per day. So basically, we can tournament just two games. We can't even decide a winner. So the only way can only be we separate the professional the tournament and amateur tournament. They are divided. But then we come to another problem. We have limited number of pros. Yeah, so that is also impossible. So the reality is, under the current, over, uh, over this kind of setting, this kind of arrangement, in short term, we cannot possibly compete. We need a change. We need more top players, but we need more top players. Probably it also means uh, then we need more financial support because otherwise we have more, for example, EGF Pro. How do we support them to actually concentrate on setting goal? That's impossible. Yeah, and in order to have more financial support, probably essentially the best way is we have more goal players. And for now in Europe, we don't have as, as many. So in short term, we just cannot. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but that's actually a side topic here. So I give this example, so you know, okay, this kind of reading, Yama did it. Yama actually did it in Bayomi. But if you ask, should I do this kind of work in my game? I wouldn't recommend. Yeah, this actually reminded me, uh, a few weeks ago, I have a student, he's only 13 years old, and uh, he has actually shown me one of uh, his games. Actually, it's not a few weeks, it's like two months ago. Yeah, he showed me one of his games. And um, yeah, so we are, we are, we were discussing about his that time game. And uh, he showed me there is actually a relatively big group with a lot of space inside it. And he told me that kind of, yeah, inside of that space, so much possibility, so much variation to read. He actually took over 10 minutes to read. And he told me he was complaining because his opponent basically, when he was reading, the opponent is just walking around and basically watching other players' game. And he said, I have to sit here and read. Why is that? It's so unfair. And my response to him is, this is something you read in your game. I wouldn't even think about to read it. I wouldn't even think about it. Yeah. But the thing here is, when we, we seriously talk, talk about that board situation, he's not completely wrong. That is not something actually, if it's purely top of the goal, it's actually something worth to read. And actually he find out something. There is something inside it. But the thing is, after that, he feels tired. Okay? And actually he find out that something is not decisive. It's not that important for the result of the game. So basically, afterwards I actually told him, if you are actually an Asian pro. You are doing the right thing. Unfortunately, we are European. We are playing in European tournament. Yeah, so there's such a division here. And so as this one. This one, yeah, Black Finite is brilliant, but I wouldn't recommend us to do this. Yeah, so this is the first example. Let's look at the second. Um, All right, uh, this time uh, probably not many of you know about this. And actually, this one, I just want to show the example. I don't plan to talk too much about this one. Yeah, so this is actually, uh, yeah, it's from one of my student game. You can see many <laughs> that group, right? So it's kind of messy here. And um, you put this situation like into AI. AI, we're going to tell you here, Black is leading the game. But, but it's important. Black need to actually find out the move in order to make the bottom left corner lay. If Black find out the way to make the bottom left corner to lay, 
no, black is leading again. It's easy to air. Is that easy to us? Especially if I remember correctly, black mode needs to be something like this. I remember this is the AI mode. And then when I play, uh, look into, okay, the AI suggests, huh, okay, makes sense. And it's impressive. But can we find it out in our game under time pressure? This actually comes to uh, this topic. I would say it has something to do with actually our, yeah, let's say for us to play in tournament. Um, we know that here in Europe, we have actually uh, yeah, a European professional player, Pavel. Yeah, I guess all of you know about Pavel. Um, many of my students have played against Pavel, also some friends. And then you look at their game. When it comes to, for example, around this part of the game, you put the game into AI. AI often tells my students or my those friends who are leaving the game. But they need to face to this situation as, all right, so here, black need to solve this corner. So maybe, yeah, this left and death situation. You play it correctly, you win the game. You can't solve it, then you are not winning. That's often what they are facing to. And then, under time pressure, they cannot do it, and then power wins again. What this actually tells us is actually this. We often say, what AI percentage is, or even how many points I'm leading according to AI. But what power has told us is, it is important in our, this kind of normal weekend tournament game, when we are under time pressure. Who is the one that is uh, giving the other person sumigo to work on? If you are the one who is basically like, like a teacher, okay, here's the sumigo, please work on it. You have a really good chance to win. And the one who needs to actually solve the sumigo, you're going to have enormous difficulty. That's actually the situation here. And that is why uh, yeah, let's say Dave is here, and Dave has actually uh, talked to me a few times uh, here on stream. How to beat Jonas? Jonas is actually doing something similar. Jonas keep giving people Sumigo to work on. Different from Pavel. Pavel give, uh, give people Sumigo at the crucial part of the game, when people is actually has limited time. Okay? Jonas is the one who is actually giving people so we go to work on an entire game, all, yeah, all the time. And then also, yeah, in that way to run the opponent clock down. And so gradually he is putting the opponent to actually low on time. And then your count cannot work on one important so we go keep in the game. Mm. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so how to actually con yeah, control the game in order to actually lead the game towards that kind of position? All right, that is something you need to actually first, you need to play more games to actually get the experience. Yeah, so yeah, that is actually the first thing. Uh, my way uh, to answer this question, my way is rather, I call it defensive. My way is uh, I keep my shape strong. As long as, soon as I have a weak group, I take care of it. Then basically, my thing are always safe. So basically, I wouldn't face to like at least that. Uh, my life and death situation. Okay? Then, yeah, we will be faced to his life and death situation. We will see. But then, if it is the, his life and death situation, it's unlikely a sumigo I have to work out. Yeah, that's my way. But I want to tell you, that way is not necessarily the best because imagine, yeah, imagine this kind of situation. I have a big and relatively empty territory. On number, if it's on my territory, I'm winning. But then the opponent invaded them. Okay, I have to kill it in order to win, right? So that's basically, I call it, assumigo to me. And if my opponent failed that one, he's probably behind on points. But he can still play any game. And maybe he can actually try something else elsewhere. I kill him just to keep myself in the game. But if I fail to kill, I lose the game. 
So even if it's about his life and death, it is my survival still. So even if I'm yeah, by that strategy, I'm actually making make sure I myself is strong, is alive everywhere. It's already defensive enough against this strategy. It's not perfect. Yeah. So yeah, one answer here I noticed is actually correct. That is uh, yeah, but yeah, he yeah, Dave said you need to be insane. It is, I would rather say, you need to get used to this kind of relatively messy situation and you are capable to work something of them out. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, this one is right. Uh, so normally, the one who plays Moyo, you need to always prepare for when the opponent invade. How do I attack not kill in order to still keep the game relatively balanced not i'm forced to kill and i want i can tell there is a way because when the opponent invade your moyo he wouldn't invade your entire moyo that's impossible he can only invade partly of your moyo even if it can be a core part and if you control it well, you can often control the opponent into a relatively small area of your moyo and keep the majority of your moyo as your territory. But that requires you not to think as killing is my only choice. Oh, okay. I know that you're going to try C2 here and probably die. That's actually what happened in this game to Black. Black later tried to see two and die and he lost his game because of that. In this game. But anyways, okay, so this is actually another thing I call it. Yeah, it's reading. But it's not easy to read. He especially imagine skill. You can see in both that Yama game and in this game, we are in the second half of the game. Very likely at this stage of the game, you're already very low on time. And then you have to read this kind of thing out. It's very challenging. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so here, this is the part you say, I'm going to keep doing those kind of difficult sumigo, and then I can be better. You can do that, but you need to make sure, not only you can solve those kind of sumigo, you need to solve them fast. That is why I said, you need to actually do some very simple problem and work them out fast. So basically, this is the case here. I work on some simple ones. I already keep solving them really fast. Can I try another level and see if I can still solve them fast? Okay, then you go up. Okay, and initially I work on the next level relatively slowly, but then I can work them out fast. Okay, then you go up to one another level. Okay, this is actually the ability we will need to work out things fast. It can be then, for example, this kind of problem, you give it to Yama, Yama can actually work out it fast, and then he can solve it. Okay, if you have that ability, you can actually manage this, this situation. But if you say, I cannot really work it out fast, it takes time. That means you lose at this board position. That's just the reality. Okay, let's go to the next example here. And now we have something I, be I believe you are capable to work out. Okay. All right. Okay, this one, I need you to work it out fast. Black move next. How to work out this one? Is there any opportunity? I hope you can see some opportunity here. Okay, if you say you are not sure what to read, then it's a problem. Okay, first find out what to read.
Okay, I can give a bit more time because you are not a player. You need to get familiar about the board situation, or I mean the whole board shape. Yeah, that's uh, actually my question. Are we talking about top side? Is that what, what, what we are talking about? Mm hmm. Yeah. White, white is not alive yet. That might be true, but uh, white, this move itself is, is, is giving and the black three stones uh, need to be managed. Okay, I will use the very modest word, managed. So probably, uh, assuming here you are in short of time, uh, you probably shouldn't think about how am I gonna kill white, red, right, like the whole group. Does anyone see what black will do here? I first hope you can find out what yeah what to read. Hmm. Okay. A whole variation, please. Yeah, we can all see J9 here. Many people see J9 here, but after J9, what? So assuming here, J9, capture, then what? Is this difficult? H11. Alright. Yeah. So are we to play find it? So black honey, white push. This one, are we to play one last question? I'll tell you what to do. Extend, yes. All right, so there's not even a call. Black is done, white is just a capture. And the, the game is done like this. Okay. This, okay, now I come back to the original position. You can see here, okay, when I define simple problem, I'm not sure if this suits to everybody. Because, okay, this is something to me. I just uh, have a glance here. I know top side black is fine because black has a top side that pillar at the K19, that is NA. So black top side is alive. And then J9 looks like the shape point. And then I'm gonna take the liberty from the honey there and look like what can be captured. I just need to read about how exactly I'm gonna implement this. Okay. This is something if you are capable to manage inside, I would say at the most one minute. This is something you, yeah, let's say this is a kind of problem you need to keep practicing in order to be competitive in tournament. Okay, and in this game, black find it here quickly and then black manage. 
This is actually one of our reading, and you need to be able to actually react quickly, even if you are under time pressure. In this case, black is under time pressure, black find it. Okay, now we come to the next. Uh, this is uh, probably something you are very familiar with, I believe. Okay, if that one is something hard for you to solve so quickly, you need to actually go down to a level and then solve something readily quickly. And that basically means if you are one who is fitting to that board situation, there's not there's still not much you can do. Yeah, that's just the reality. And uh, but as uh, my criteria here, you need to actually improve your fast reading ability to reach to that level, and then that is the problem you need to be able to work out. The first two examples I have given, I actually don't, don't expect anyone here in Europe to work them out in their tournament game. But the, the last one, I do. Okay, and then coming to this one. This one is not a reading problem. This one is rather a judgment, judgment problem. So this one, you also need to be able to react relatively fast in your tournament game. So why not attack what black should do? Okay, on the note, I want to remind again, this is a judgment problem, not a reading problem. I hope you understand me, what does it mean, judgment problem. If you don't understand what, what, what I mean, judgment problem, you can tell me in chat, I don't understand. It's fine. Mm. Aha, okay. Uh, I will play, I read your, uh, I read about your sentence. Uh, we can talk about it soon, but uh, yeah, I, I want to wait for other people to react. Also, a bit to play. How? Yeah, sure. Bruno, definitely you have seen it. Yeah, this is one of the most painful games. For me as a coach. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so basically here, when one does this attachment here, we should actually realize both of this relatively empty area around what this L3 stone is actually one of the biggest area, but not the only one. And the other relatively big one is on the top side at N70. Those are the two big ones. So, uh, a way to play that, take Sunday to play N17. I guess the more accurate expression should be, can we either get the bottom or N17? If we can get one of them, then it is fine here. And that's all what we can get. We can't get more than that. Then from this sense, so, if white get a, get something at the bottom, it's his go take. So we take N17. Or if he insists on taking N17 himself, we're gonna re-get the bottom. That's basically our line here. And with that line, here the answer is right. Black decent at M2. That's also my answer. Black decent here, M2. Yeah, this is the way here. And to me, I mean, uh, Bruno has already noticed that this is actually from uh, pro qualification. And uh, I believe many of you have heard about this game. Eventually, it comes to something related to, to Chinese rule. And then Black had an opportunity to win by half a point. I, I, I'm not sure if many of you have heard about it. 
I actually read about the related. Uh, yeah, I uh, I was there in Sweden during this tournament. I was watching this game. Um, I actually didn't know about this until the entire tournament is over. Until the entire tournament is over, when I was was on the train with Lucan to the airport, we got to read about something about. Aha, uh -huh, okay, actually this game, they could have won by half point in a in a tricky way. Uh, during the game, of course, nobody knows. After the game, we didn't know. I, we only get to know that, uh, yeah, after the entire time, we, we realize, huh, that's actually a possibility. What I'm trying to say here is, imagine this is actually, uh, yeah, imagine there, you're actually the one who played this black in that tournament. And this is a pro qualification final. Black win it, black become pro. Imagine you are the, this black player and under time pressure. To actually do that thing right is very challenging. It, I know that it is doable, and yes, that it is doable, but it's very challenging under that kind of circumstances. That, that is why we didn't even think about it. But this one, as long as your mind is clear, I could say it's doable. Yeah, because this only requires your, your mind to be clear on what is important, what is not important, what is big, what is small. So this is actually doable. And in this game, Black didn't really play this move. Black actually, okay, uh, I'm not sure if uh, you still remember. What Black did is actually the opposite of, of, from what we have discussed. In the game, Black did the push. This one, this one, and let the Atari happen. This one happens, this one happens, and I think he played this. He played something like this, and then White gets the connection. So what Black did is basically he take gold at bottom, and then White still gets get something at at the bottom, and White also get an an seventy. This puts the game to half point. But if Black he his mind is clear about okay those two I get I need to get one of them. All right then this 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 mistake will definitely be prevented. Hmm. So, uh, talking about this game, many people say Black could have won by half point in the end. That's probably something exciting and probably also fun. But I would say the real opportunity is not that one. The real opportunity to win this game is actually this one single moment. And this only requires you to have a clear mind. Okay. Yeah, now I'm going to move on. Okay. So, Okay, so here you can see there are actually two aspects we are talking about. One, reading, and what to read, what not to read. In a game, it is very important what to read, what not to read. What we should prepare before the tournament about reading, what we, we, we need to skip, because they are not as important. Okay, so first I'd like to talk, uh, yeah, finish this part about reading, okay? Um, I have prepared something. I hope you don't feel headache about that. Okay, I guess you can see this board situation here. So I have shown four corners here. And uh, I think some of them, they are classic. So probably you already know the answer about. But I want, yeah, if you have seen those, uh, yeah, those problems already, I want you to forget about, aha, this is a classic. I remember the answer. The answer is this and that. I want you to imagine this is the first time you have seen those problems. And then the question I, I, I'm asking here is, which are the problems you think you should be able to manage in your game? If it happens in your game or something similar like this happens in your game, which are the ones you say, if I don't solve it, it is wrong. That's my question. So it's not like I'm not asking about okay those four four columns. What is the answer? I'm asking what are the ones you need you need to be able to solve. What are the ones? Well, I give up. Yeah, I know this is a hard question, but those so the thing here is 
if you say okay probably he, yeah let's say i will i will tell you what i'm gonna do facing to judge this question which one is the easiest i'm gonna try to work it out and if i can work it out like in two minutes all right then, then that is what i should work out for the others i forget it yeah but you know here on, on this method there's a problem because some of them they are classic so if you say i have seen it and i just have a glance i can tell you because i, I remember the answer well you have to be away from that yeah from that way of thinking mm. yeah it is painful but if it dies it dies because uh, if you yeah if you imagine you are in your game and uh, i just cannot work it out then you cannot work it out that's reality Okay. Okay. Actually, I have a question here. Is any of those problems, like say you have the reaction as, aha, uh -huh, this is a, this is one of those classic. I've seen this before. I remember the answer. Does anyone feel like that? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure here I show. Yeah, there's a couple of them. They are classic. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Got it. Uh huh. Bottom left is very famous. All right. Okay. Mm, yeah, 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 that's very true. Uh, the problem might be in a real game, uh, there may not necessarily be the two jumps at B7 and at H3. <laughs> I guess that can be the challenging part in a real game. Yeah, especially the else H three one is crucial. Yeah. Under bear, you mean none of them. All right. Okay. I will actually uh yeah here because we are not not, not actually doing a stomachal session. I will actually show something here and then uh yeah, I will basically show uh the answer. Maybe my answer is wrong because uh, uh I thought they are under my control, so I, I likely didn't really check the answer. So maybe I'm wrong, but if I'm wrong, please correct me, okay? But uh, uh, as I can see, I start with, uh, okay, I start with the hardest ones because the hardest ones, yeah, why should you might think they are the hardest ones? Because I'm saying they are not human. They are not the ones you say, yeah, you say, okay, imagine this is my tournament game. I can actually work it out in a relatively short period of time or in bear yummy. Assuming I have the main time, I can work it out in a few minutes. Okay, no, I can't. And it's definitely not in bear yummy. I don't think they are. So I will start with top right. Okay, so top right corner, black start from this one. And then, oh, I, I just noticed top right corner, I missed a black stone, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a black stone there. Yeah, so black start with that one, and then white enlarged his living space, but enlarged here. Black next one is peep and honey. That is the answer of this corner. Okay, I hope I'm not wrong, but uh, if I'm wrong, please tell me about it. And this one, you ask me, how did you read it? Yeah, that is that is my answer. I didn't read it. This is a classic. I remember the answer. Yeah, so it's, since I remember the answer, I know the answer is this. Yeah, I fully understand you, uh, Foucault. You, I imagine this is not a classic. Imagine this corner. Okay, I need to work it out in my game. Yeah, so I imagine my students are playing this game. And my students play this one. Honey, connect, decent. Should I play blame him? No. It's fine. It's very understandable. It's very understandable. Maybe some of my students want to be tricky. And then, uh, sorry, uh, he plays the decent. And then they'll put an answer here. He still fail, but it's very understandable. So this kind of corner, 
we, okay, in my language, I say it's not human, but actually it is human. It's just not for us. If you give this to the top pro, top pro say, hey, this is just a simple one. He, he just show it first. I remember I have met some pro in real life, and they show variation like this to me. What I'm going to do here, I just started looking at it. He already showed me the answer very quickly. They, they had the practice, but clearly that's not our quality. And in our, yeah, I, that, let's say when we are playing our tournament games, this kind of problem, we cannot work it out. And AI said, hey, you could have worked out and then you win the game. And you say, I missed these opportunities. That's why I, I didn't win the game. No, let's forget about this one. You lost the game because of somewhere else. You have other opportunities, not just this one. It's just like Lucan did miss that kind of half point win variation. But he had other opportunities, just like earlier, that end game. Okay, so this is the one. And the bottom right corner is also a classic. I will show the answer. The answer, if I remember, is this one. Honey. Those moves are simple. Next move, black play here is probably not so simple. Okay. And then white honey. And then black honey here. Black decent is probably not simple. Yeah, and then white card, Atari, we Atari from here. Yeah, that decent is definitely hard. I guess here, in this variation, there are two moves that is hard. Number one is uh, this one, two squeeze from the outside, and the second one is decent. And the thing is, if, for example, we come back to this moment, how to work this out here? We must kill it. Probably give you a bit of time, you can see the decent. But you need to be able to see the decent already here. That's extremely challenging, right? Yeah, so this is a classic. I remember the answer. I've seen the, yeah, this problem so many times. So yeah, I have the, this, the answer in my mind. But imagine this is the first time I see it. It happened in my game, and I failed to work it out. It's fine. Yeah, then you just cannot work it out. Note, those problems, those problems, the top right corner and the bottom right ones, it's not like I would suggest you, if, if uh, for example, you are doing Sumigo, you're going to skip it. Rather, you don't do that that many. You do, you do some of them, but the majority shouldn't be them. Yeah, but okay, now let's go to some easier ones. Let's say top left corner to me is the easiest one. This push is our sene. This one is our sene. I guess like this you can see the answer. If I put those, those two extremes here, how to make this black group live? Just one move. I guess it's, you can see it. Can you? Or do I need to show? <laughs> Yes, okay, now you can see it. Yeah, so this one is not so difficult, right? Yeah, and the last two moves are just two extremes, two standing. And basically, it's one move. Should we be able to solve this in our game in a relatively short period of time? Yes, we definitely should. I would basically say, if you say, well, I don't see those two extremes quickly, and therefore that prevent me to see the code to me, so I fail to see this answer here quickly. I want to tell you, maybe uh, you cannot really see it quickly now, but eventually you need to be able to. This is the quality we need to play in European tournaments. So I'm just saying that, uh, assuming here your fast reading ability is not here yet, remember, top right, bottom right, we can forget it. This one, we need to be there. Bottom left corner is actually something I would call in between. Because the bottom left corner, uh, okay, first is white move. Okay, I need to. Okay, so white, honey, then peep, basically now it's done. Because like this, then, then, then connect, this corner is dead. Because honey, go decent. So this corner is basically just a, a order thing. Because many, many people are not patient, they do this directly. And then honey, 
and then it gives black this opportunity with that F2 cut, then it's alive. That's all the problem. Yeah, so on this one, it's more it's trickier than the top left one because you have a older thing you will need to solve. It's not that easy, but this is something I would say also as oral quality you will need. And also it is important when white plays the wrong order, imagine this is a problem as black you need to solve. You need to be able to see this jump in a short period of time. All right. Now I believe you understand me about do simple problems and do a lot of simple problems around one month before your tournament. Okay, I, I okay, so just to make it clear, I will actually go back to that page. Oh, where is it? Yeah, this one. About number two, I hope that's clear. About number two here. I hope this is clear here. Do relatively simple problems before the tournament. Okay, now I come to the last part of my lecture today here. And you can see still on this part, we say reduce amount at the last days. Reduce amount at the last day. All right. Um, do you still remember earlier I showed that, that uh, for the situation uh, about pro qualification, we say we need to actually make sure we either get the bottom territory or we get the top side two stones. I guess you still remember that. That one requires in the game, during an entire game, you have a very clear mind. And okay, here I want to actually talk about this one and I give a description. I hope you understand me. This is important. I hope you understand me. Um, we normally say a country is running well. It needs a good government. But that's not good enough. We also need the officers who serve for the local community to actually implement the government policies well aspect okay and between those two which one is more important okay there's a clear answer the officers even if the government doesn't necessarily have the best policies if the officers uh, they have the quality they are responsible this country will gonna be will, yeah will actually live well and actually everybody will be happy but if the other way wrong actually the quality will be lower Okay, that's how I'm talking about that part. Coming back to go, what is a government? Government is basically, my mind is very clear in a game about in general, what is the right thing to do. I always know what is the right thing to do. I know what I'm doing. There, there's no moment I say, I'm playing this move. What am I doing? I don't know. I just play that move. Okay, and here, I did this. What is my intention? I have a difficulty to explain. Probably something like that. You know, this basically your government is probably. Okay? And then what is the officer? Officer is basically here, I know this is the right thing to do. Specifically, what I'm gonna do here. How do I actually make this intention done? How do I make the work done? They are the officers too. Alright. And the same as uh, running a country, the officers are officers are more important. But here we are talking about the two prepare for the tournament. And here you, I want you to see that playing games regularly, work on relatively simple problems. Okay, those are the part you actually train your officers. That's the way you actually train your officers. All right. And I want to remind the third part is different because your officers' ability. When it coming to the last few days before the tournament and also during the tournament, their ability can hardly be changed. And you shouldn't expect that their ability will improve, their quality will improve. One thing that can improve is actually, however, the government. How clear your mind is. Do you know what you are doing? That is something that can be changed. Therefore, we say in your preparation period of time, before the tournament, you need to train your officers. But then 
when it's approach, approaching to the tournament or during the tournament, the officers, officers, they are working in the background, just like here. I know that you're all listening to me on your, on your computer or you're on your laptop, on your tablet, or on your phone. And uh, especially on a computer or laptop, you have, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, I, on my computer is control L delete. And then you, you can click task manager. Note, the officers are working during the tournament in your task manager. You can't see them. You don't give them a command. They serve for you silently. It's just like in a government, the prime minister, you ask him, do you know in that community who is actually serving for that, uh, for that venue, for that uh, street? How can the prime minister know? The prime, the prime minister only knows them. those officers. They are serving for the local community silently. Remember, during a tournament, they are serving silently. You don't give them command. What you can give the command is the government. Is the my mind needs to be clear. I know what I'm doing. All right. So to reduce the amount of working on the problems is actually to give your mind space. So the government will gonna take over. It's no longer the officers. The government will gonna take over. Also during the tournament, they will gonna take over. That's the first part. And then the second part, that's what Garden had mentioned earlier. You need to get enough sleep. You need to take care of your, yourself well. During the tournament, eat well. Be in a good mood. Okay, even if, uh, let's say, uh, I might actually lose a game. Okay, keep your mood relatively high to serve for the next game. Because that's the way to keep the government functioning. And also, sometimes you may not necessarily get good sleep. Find all the ways like to drink some coffee, and my way will be to actually go to the toilet and pour some cold water on my on my forehead here, and then to actually make sure my mind is clear. During the entire game, I always know what am I doing, why am I doing this. For some of you who has actually seen about my um, some of uh, my tournament game in the in Paris, actually my mind wasn't very clear. At the very last game, at the last part, because I was tired. But a competitive, a competitive player need to be clear there as well. Your mind is clear. You will do things in general, right? And then you have trained your officers daily before the tournament. You are ready for a tournament in general. That's actually in general what I should talk about, and that is actually the meaning of the last part. Remember, reduce the amount in the last few days so the government can actually take over. Mm. Yes, because uh, the early games are too easy, and uh, that is actually a problem because uh, those games are easy, but it's not like I wasn't thinking. It still takes my energy, and then gradually, when it comes to the later rounds, when it comes to the harder games, I was tired. But then I need to face two harder games. I would prefer the first three games are the harder ones, and then the following three are the easier ones. That will be ideal. But uh, yeah, we know that in tournament it doesn't happen that way. In the yeah, in, to in tournament the, the yeah, it's always okay that it's the other way around. Normally the decisive game come at the last. Okay, finally, before we finish this uh, lecture, I would like to uh, show one thing here, and this is actually the last one I would like to show, because this has happened in my student, and this one... Okay, this is the board situation here, and this is actually what I should say. When we say you do a lot of simple problems, I just want to emphasize, it's not, not like the difficult problem doesn't have a market. They are useless. They can be useful. Especially imagine if in the first half of, of your game, what if it comes to some messy situation that requires your reading? Like this. After what, Nobby, what black should do here in order to be out from this? Mainly, black cannot die the tail. Because as long as black tail is alive, either white top left corner and white top side will be captured.
okay? And I want to tell here, this is actually from one of my students' game, and uh, I was watching this game, and I feel like I was, yeah, I was impressed because my, yeah, after I see the next move, I say, this kid is better than me. That's my reaction. I think, yeah, he's better than me. Because he is capable to read this thing out inside two minutes. So basically, it's actually a relatively difficult read, but he can actually manage in short period of period period of time, and that's not easy. So it's not like the difficult reading we just forget. It. So do those kind of relatively difficult problem, you still should do it. Just in comparison to, to relatively simple ones and to Im improve your that kind of relatively fast reading ability, this is not as important. But imagine you are capable to actually improve your reading and you say, this one I can actually work out in one minute, in two minutes, one minute, or even in Bayomi. Well, you can be awesome. Then probably you can compete in European Championship. So this is a situation I, 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 I may leave it to you. How to work this out, but I guess this is something I will leave, leave it for you for fun. Right. All right, that's basically everything I want to tell for my lecture today. Then, okay, but uh, I don't plan to finish yet. Any questions? Any questions you would like to ask, or you think anything about talent I didn't mention, but you think there's something you would like to know, or you think uh, I can probably help you? Please mention. Um, yeah, I will leave this board situation here though for those who would like to think. Ah, well, uh, Atari, anyone? Uh, you can probably then, after we finish the lecture, you can check the uh, video later. And also, uh, I believe uh, either Anti or Miko, I don't know. They will probably upload this uh, lecture to YouTube soon, and you can also check it out. Oh, any advice for the first uh, tournament, time tournament player? Mm. If this is your first time tournament, uh, you might be nervous about the clock next to you. But I want to tell you, it's not... Yeah, it's not a problem. Sometimes you might actually forget about to press clock a couple of times. Most likely, your opponent will gonna remind you, and you are gonna remember. But don't be too nervous about the clock, and don't don't be too nervous about the possibility you may lose some time. Most likely, you wouldn't. Most likely, you wouldn't. And uh, another thing, I still remember the uh, my experience when I played the first time. When the first time I played in Tom. Uh, everything is new to me. I play there, I, I'm not familiar with anything, and I play against an opponent that I think is weaker than weaker than me, but I'm not really familiar about the time setting, about the clock, and I lost my time. But it, it doesn't matter, everyone has the first time. Just, yeah, this, yeah what they said is important. Enjoy the tournament. Enjoy the tournament. Result, may, re, yeah, result can, can be secondary to you. You are going to earn the experience, and then it will gonna serve for your future tournament. Rarely anyone, I wouldn't say nobody, but rarely anyone, the very first time he played the tournament, he got a great success. Rarely. Yeah, just enjoy and play. Just play the move you think is right. Yeah, don't don't think about to, yeah anything else. And every single game matters. Don't. Uh, I hope you are not going to be affected by other game result. Because, yeah, this uh, tournament, tournament means there are several rounds. But remember, every single game is a separate battle. Mm. Yeah, I guess uh, during the tournament, you just play and enjoy. There's actually a lot more to think after the tournament because it serves for the future. Mm. Yes, okay, this this question I like it. Do you change something in preparation depending on the time setting of tournament? Yes, I do. Uh basically, okay, in, yeah, with this question, okay, I okay, I guess you still remember. In the first part, uh, in my those three lines there I have mentioned, the first part you need to keep playing regularly, playing games. 
Then, of course, when we say you are playing games, you need to actually prepare. Uh, you need to play accordingly. Like I always uh, suggest by those different students, if the time setting is something special, like uh, I think two of my students will gonna play the uh, upcoming tournament in two weeks, uh, Dutch Open. And that time setting is rather special because the uh, Bayomi is 22nd Japanese Bayomi one time. It's very harsh there. It's very harsh there. Therefore, you need to get used to it. And uh, you can't just play online game 20 seconds because you click your mouse is actually faster than you just uh, play your stone and uh, click the clock. Therefore, you would better experience that kind of 20 seconds by yourself over a real board against a real opponent in real life there. So I recommend my, my those students to actually go to the local club and maybe find somebody they know similar strengths, try out games accordingly. So to get used to the time get used to the time setting there. That is that is actually crucial. So of course we prepare and that is one thing I complain about that Paris tournament because uh, me and my student we have prepared for the tournament with the tournament time setting we have written on the website which is uh, Canadian Bay Yomi, 15 moves uh, in five minutes. And then right before the first round start, they say we change it to Fisher, then it is a 10 second Fisher. That is uh, completely different from what we have prepared for. So that's very annoying. <laughs> but uh, well, they change that, there's nothing we can do. We can also say, we can only say, hopefully next time it doesn't happen, or we choose to play a different tournament. That's the only thing we can do. Yeah, yeah. When this kind of sudden trend of time setting happens, that is pretty annoying. But uh, that is actually the organizer's fault. And probably the organizer didn't really expect. <laughs> I mean, we are all amateur players playing European amateur tournament. Uh, but the thing is that we are preparing the tournament seriously. And I don't think the, the organizer has expected there can be people like us. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty annoying, but there's nothing we can do. We, yeah, so, uh, um, well, I guess uh, next year, if uh, it is still Easter, and or let's say ar around April, and I'm going to choose a tournament, I will probably choose to play in Prague instead. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, on that part, there's just absolutely nothing we can do. Because we have prepared for what you have mentioned, and then you change suddenly. Then what we can do? Mm. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I missed that part. Yeah, 20 seconds is actually uh, very fast, even online, yes. But you, yeah, let's say uh, in real life, it's actually faster. So you would better adapt and then play some games, uh, like, yeah, with a similar time setting. Just like how you, you, you're going to play in tournament in real life against similar stress opponent. Yeah, it's amazing is just to adapt, to get used to it. So you know what kind of situation I'm capable to mention under that kind of time pressure, what kind of situation I cannot. And then also this game, I have taken quite some time to think in this area. Should I think about it? You can put it into AI. You say, okay, I played here. I have a consider about this move and that move. What is the difference between those three moves? Is it worth it for me to take the time? Often, if it's a relatively, relatively open situation, like in the opening, it's not worth it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, if the time setting, uh, especially the Bayon part is harsh, you also need to actually figure out when not to think. Yeah, that's the reality in our tournament. Mm. Any other questions? I hope I don't miss anything. If I if I do miss, please copy paste your same question again. <laughs> I don't think I miss anything. Oh. Yes, the answer is cut at J10. Yeah, the answer is that one. But the thing is, the challenging part is you need to be able to read it out very quickly. Very quickly, yeah. So my student actually managed in two minutes. I, I, if I'm honest, I don't think I can manage it in two minutes. That's impossible. <laughs> Yeah.
Ah, uh, oh, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, because you said the card first, so I assume you notice the card JSON. <laughs> deny. Ah, uh, no. Uh, it's not deny. No. Yeah, it's card JSON. But yeah, this one I admit is pretty difficult because uh, I did I I didn't find it when my student played the play that JSON. It, yeah, after he played it, it still took me quite some time. He played here, really? Does it work? If I'm gonna do this, what are you gonna do? If I'm gonna do that, what well, I'm gonna do that, what are you gonna do? I it, it took me some time to read. Then I figured out, huh, okay, this move actually is good. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and then I, I, I put it into air, air confirm that card is brilliant. I still remember, um, at the time I only have a Lila or Lizzie. I call it, doesn't matter. Yeah, so which on show shows percentage? When white Nobby, I think Lila already put white at 98%. And after my student cut there, I remember, uh, yeah, and then I put it onto the, on Lila. Lila actually dramatically changed the percentage, and then it's from white 98 to black 90. After I give him time to read, I give Lila time to read. So afterwards, I told my students, you, you actually defeat Lila. Lila didn't see your move. <laughs> so of course, I didn't see his move. Hmm. But anyways, OK. Um, if uh, there's no more question here, I guess I'm going to close this lecture here. I hope uh, if any of you who will going to have any kind of tournament soon or in the near future, my this lecture can be helpful to you. Good luck and enjoy your tournament. You will learn, yeah, you will all learn from the tournament and become a better tournament player. I hope my suggestion here can be helpful. And if you think what I have mentioned here is somewhat reasonable or you would like to try it out, please try it, I, try it out, let's say, in your preparation. And uh, I hope you're going to get some great experience in tournament, get some success. Good luck and have fun. Okay, then probably let's finish here and uh, I will talk to you all in a while. Thanks and see you later. Bye.